Hello friends and welcome to yet another fascinating video of Wisdom Zone and today also I'm gonna give you 10 amazing English idioms because today I have this fourth session on 10 amazing idioms so it is my earnest request to all the viewers please watch this video carefully until the end so that you can learn all the 10 amazing idioms I'm gonna discuss today and again if you haven't subscribed to this channel Please do not wait friends and immediately subscribe to Wisdom Zone and hit the bell icon to get the first notification of this type of informative video. So without further ado, let's get started. Three, two, one. So friends, welcome back once again to the fourth session on 10 amazing English idioms and today also I'm gonna give you 10 amazing English idioms for your everyday English conversation and if you want you can incorporate them smartly in your writing also so before I move ahead let me quickly remind all the viewers that I have provided the previous three links on amazing English idioms in the description so if you haven't checked the previous videos you can check the previous videos and links are given in the description so let's get started with today's video so friends as you see the first amazing English idiom which I'm gonna discuss today is on your screen that is half the battle so it is a very interesting idiom isn't that let me explain what does that mean it means a large part of the effort or the most important part of action that is needed so that is called half the battle sometimes we say half the battle won isn't that so that means a large part of the effort or the most important part of action that is needed that you should be doing so the major part of the effort is also called half the battle right or the most important part of action that is needed so let me show you how to use it as you see the example on your screen clearing the preliminary interview is half the battle so that means that is the most crucial part that is a major part or the most important part to clear the preliminary interview and that's called half the battle so I'm quite sure it's crystal clear that means a large part of the particular thing that is needed to be done or the most important part here that is the preliminary interview and once you get selected in the preliminary then you go to the next round isn't that so I'm quite sure it's crystal clear up next we are going to focus on the second amazing idiom for today that is go hand in hand which is an extremely useful one so let me tell you what does that mean it means when two things are closely related and may happen at the same time that time we say it goes hand in hand so let me show you how to use this amazing idiom so as you see the example on your screen the increasing unemployment goes hand in hand with the growing crime that means it complements it exists at the same time because of unemployment obviously we may see the crime rate may also increase so there is a connection isn't that so they go hand in hand that's why this idiom is used so I'm quite sure it's crystal clear isn't that so when two things clo are closely related and may happen at the same time so that time we use it maybe they are dependent also like this the increasing unemployment goes hand in hand with the growing crime so I'm quite sure it's crystal clear so up next we are going to focus on the third amazing idiom for today that is on your screen that is straight from the horse's mouth or you can also say from the horse's mouth so let me tell you the exact meaning of this amazing idiom it means to learn from someone who knows the truth who can give you the right perspective or the correct picture or who can give you the right information that's called from the horse's mouth or straight from the horse's mouth so let me show you how to use this amazing idiom as you see the example on your screen Ben did not believe in the news about his promotion he wanted it straight from the horse's mouth that means he was skeptical he did not believe in the news initially perhaps about his promotion so he had that doubt so he wanted it straight from the horse's mouth that means he wanted it from the manager or the boss perhaps who is the right person to confirm this kind of news isn't that so I'm quite sure it's clear so like this way you can use this amazing idiom in your conversation I want it from the horse's mouth or you can say I want it straight from the horse's mouth so up next we are going to focus on the fourth one that is bits and pieces it is obviously an idiom and we use that as an expression also it means 
things or objects of different kinds so that time we use this more of an expression it is bits and pieces so let me show you how to use it the journalists have collected a few bits and pieces of information from some local lights but no one knows about the accident properly so I'm quite sure it's crystal clear so they have collected a few bits and pieces of information as no one knows about the accident properly they cannot give a proper information or in detail information so like this way you can use this radium bits and pieces so up next we are going to focus on the next one as you see on your screen the fifth one which is given on your screen fifth one is close to the bone close to the bone it's an amazing idiom isn't that close to the bone means to say or write something which is close to the truth in a way that it may offend someone right so to say or write something which is very close to the truth and in a way it may offend someone right that's called close to the bone so let me show you how to use it our boss may find sam's remarks quite close to the bone that means his remarks may be very close to the truth and he may offend our boss maybe he said something too directly and in a straightforward manner okay he disclosed some truth so that's why we can use this idiom here quite close to the bone so up next we will see the sixth amazing idiom for today that is have nerves of steel it's a fascinating idiom on its own to have nerves of steel means to have the ability to remain calm and control your fear even in difficulty that is called to have nerves of steel that means when you have that ability to remain calm in difficult situation or in some kind of dangerous situation and can control your fear so that time you use this wonderful idiom have nerves of steel so let me show you how to use it you need to have nerves of steel to drive on congested roads so it's true you need to have a very good nerve you have to have that courage to go through um, this type of situation when roads are congested slightly difficult you can panic so that's why you need that ability to stay calm so that's why this idiom is used that you need to have nerves of steel to drive on congested roads so i'm quite sure it's clear how to use this amazing idiom so try to incorporate it up next we are going to turn our attention towards the seventh amazing idiom for today that is on your screen that is blow hot and cold which is extremely useful and amazing too so let me explain what's the meaning blow hot and cold means someone who keeps changing his attitude towards something sometimes being very enthusiastic sometimes the person becomes too low and not interested at all so that kind of attitude is called blow hot and cold so that time we can say that uh, is blowing hot and cold that means someone who keeps changing his attitude and sometimes he becomes very enthusiastic very outgoing and next time he becomes very dull and not interested at all so that kind of attitude of a person is called blow hot and cold so a person who keeps on changing like this way it's not predictable the person is quite unpredictable so let me show you how to use this wonderful idiom blow hot and cold as you see the example on your screen kelly is quite upset as her husband has been blowing hot and cold about their trip to switzerland that means kelly is upset because her husband is not very clear and he is blowing hot and cold means he is quite indecisive he is changing his attitude sometimes maybe he is saying that he is interested he is interested to go for the trip and sometimes maybe he is telling that he is not interested he is showing that he is not interested so that's why this idiom is used blowing hot and cold right and that makes Kelly upset because this kind of attitude is shown by her husband that he has been blowing hot and cold about their trip that means he is sometimes showing enthusiasm sometimes becomes very enthusiastic about the trip and next time after some time again he shows lack of interest so that's the we use this wonderful idiom to talk about someone's attitude so i'm quite sure it's crystal clear how to use this amazing idiom so up next we are going to focus on the eighth one which you see on your screen that is to have butterflies in your stomach which is quite essential it means to be nervous before a very important thing or event means to feel nervous or anxious so let me show you how to use this amazing idiom i had butterflies in my stomach before the client meeting so i'm quite sure it's clear it means that i was quite anxious i was nervous before the client meeting so i'm quite sure it's crystal clear how to use this amazing idiom 
so without wasting any more time let's concentrate on the ninth idiom for today which you see on your screen that is keep your fingers crossed it's a fascinating idiom and we, it sounds quite dynamic isn't that so you must have heard of it so today i'm going to explain the meaning keep your fingers crossed we can use this idiom smartly and it means to hope for good luck or success that time we can say let's keep our fingers crossed so let me show you how to use it i have kept my fingers crossed for the appraisal that means i am optimistic i am obviously expecting a kind of a good thing i am expecting good luck or success so that's why i kept my fingers crossed because i am expecting some good things i am expecting to get a promotion or to get a good appraisal so i'm quite sure it's crystal clear so at last we are going to concentrate on the last idiom for today and the 10th one which you see on you that is put your eggs in one basket which is classical idiom so let me explain what's the meaning of this amazing idiom it means to put all your effort or resources into doing one thing so that if it fails you don't have any alternatives left so that time we use this idiom put all your eggs in one basket that means to put all your efforts in one particular thing and doing one particular thing or put all your effort or resources into doing something or one single thing and if it fails then you don't have any alternatives left so that's the meaning of this idiom so it's quite classical and fascinating so let me show you how to use this beautifully as you see the example a smart investor never puts all his eggs in one basket that's because a smart investor knows that he should not invest in one venture invest in one project and that's why this idiom is used that a smart investor knows how to invest he never puts all his eggs in one basket that means he doesn't invest in one venture or one project and take that kind of big risk isn't that so that it fails he would not have alternatives right so a smart investor never does it so that's why this idiom is used a smart investor never puts all his eggs in one basket so i'm quite sure it's crystal clear how to use this amazing idiom so today i gave you 10 amazing and extremely essential idioms to use so please try to use them again and again in your conversation make sentences and comment below and if you want you can incorporate them in your writing also smartly and i'm quite sure you have enjoyed this video so please go through the examples and try to make more sentences and practice and again if you haven't subscribed to this channel please do not wait friends and immediately subscribe to his dumb zone and hit the bell icon to get the first notification of this type of informative video so stay tuned for further informative videos friends and do not forget to like share comment and subscribe to wisdom zone